not his feet, but his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive you the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I see in his hands the prints of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after... Eight days, again, his disciples were within. They were assembled together. This was on another Sunday, the following Sunday, the, se the Sunday after Jesus' resurrection Sunday. And Thomas was with them. Thomas is there now. Then came Jesus. Now Jesus appears unto them again, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands. And reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto, them, unto him, My Lord and my God. This morning, last but not least, that's what we're going to talk about. Last but not least, let's make our confession. I will believe God's Word. I will be who it says I can be. I will do what it says I can do. To God be the glory forever and forever. And everybody shouted amen. You may be seated this morning. When you look at Jesus' resurrection, you see the patience of God and how he dealt with people. Thomas was the last of the original disciples to come into faith concerning the resurrection. And it was a whole eight days after Jesus showed himself to the original disciples at the tomb. If you'll notice, there was a foot race in one version uh, between the youngest disciple, John, and the oldest disciple, Peter. And the Bible says John kind of bragged about being faster than the older guy. Well, my goodness, how many younger guys are not faster than us old dudes, old guys? So they all heard that he was not there. Mary Magdalene had told them, and so they took off. The Bible says together, but John wrote, you know, I outrun the other disciple. And I got there first. So he's there, but he stops at the entrance and he just looks in. And here comes the old guy. You know, he's, he's done, done this a couple of times. He stopped. He's running. He stopped. And I, I'm just talking about myself now. And, you know, he's been over and he's gotten him a few second breaths. And then when he comes, he's got a fresh... Uh, uh, breath of, of air in his lungs. He doesn't stop at the entrance. I, this is what I like about the old guys. They don't stop at the entrance. They go on in. And here John is at the very entrance looking in. But Simon Peter, the old guy, he says, we can't stop here. We got to go on in. How many has got to go on in? We got to go on in deeper. We got to go on in where ground zero happened. Not on the outside peeping in. There's a lot of Christians like that. But I want to be one of those like Simon who went on in. Amen. And so he goes on in and he examines the room. He examines the tomb. He examines where the napkin is laid and the clothes. And John is watching all of this. And then John said he became a believer. 
But I want you all to understand, Thomas was not one of those that went on in first. Thomas was lagging behind. Thomas was the last original uh, apostle uh, that believed in the resurrection of Jesus. Not I'm talking about not talking about the brother of Jesus, James. James actually was the pastor of the church at Jerusalem, and it was after the resurrection when James believed, and Jesus, the Bible says, appeared unto him, and his half-brother James became a believer. So the whole time Jesus was raised at home and all his ministry, his own half-brothers didn't even accept him. James or Jude, either one. But now they later on believed, but the original ones that he picked during his ministry, Thomas was the last one. Everybody else had come in. Everybody else had assembled and saw and believed. Everybody else had experienced him breathing the breath that he breathed upon them. And he said, receive the Holy Ghost. They felt all of that. They were there to experience that, but not Thomas. Thomas missed it. And yet Jesus just kept on coming back. He just kept on coming back. I thank God that he came back for us late stragglers, those that didn't go on in at an early age, those that didn't go on in and accept it at an early age. It took a while. I want you to understand, Jesus is still coming back for those that are not in yet, but he's showing up. And I mean, he is knocking them on their knees and he is revealing himself unto them. And he is saying, hey, come follow me. Be a believer. Come on in all the way. Come on in and get all the way in. Don't stop at the edge looking in. Don't be a gazer into the things. Be one who gets involved into the things of God in these last days. And so Thomas represents the one that came in last, but he never was least. He was never demoted for being last. I like that about Jesus. Jesus didn't hold it against Thomas because Thomas did not come in until last among the last 11 apostles that Jesus had. Now we know Judas Iscariot was not with them anymore. And the Lord later on allowed them to replace him with Matthias or Matthias. And that came right before Pentecost. But they had, there was 11, but there was only 10 meeting now because Thomas was still left out. Now he comes and they're telling him and he says, says, I will not believe until I put my hand, my finger into his nail prints and thrust my hand into his side. Why did Jesus first show them the scars in his hand and not his feet? They were there, but in his side. I want you to know Jesus wanted to know that I wasn't just asleep. Jesus wanted them to know that I wasn't just taking a nap for these last three days or I was passed out and I just kind of woke up and revived. I wasn't in a coma for three days. You see this right here? When they came to break those, those people on the cross with Jesus, they came to break their legs. And you know the story. You've probably heard it many a times. The soldiers would break their legs because it would take a long, drawn-out time for them just by hanging by their feet and their hands to die. Jesus had already been beat until his 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 ribs were showing and his his everything was just opened up and yet he survived that because no man taketh my life I lay it down that's what he said and he wasn't going to die until it was time brother Don for him to die and I want you to know Jesus gave his life he laid it down all right so they came to the point of breaking the prisoner's legs and they started breaking the people on the cross legs Jesus in the middle and they came to him because they would break their legs and they would that would expedite their death because they couldn't hold themselves up and get any more air. They couldn't breathe anymore. Their legs were broken, so it could not support their body. And by hanging by the full weight of their body with no support from their legs, they would die from asphyxiation. They would suffocate. And so they went to this one, broke his legs, went to the one on the other side, broke his legs, and they came to Jesus, and he was already dead. Because he said, Father, into thy hands I commend thy spirit. And he gave up the spirit. He gave up the ghost, and he died. No man took him. He gave his life on Calvary for us, all right? So he was dead, but... 
you know, I, I watched a little bit. I can't watch a lot of it because, man, it, it just rocks my world. But I watched a little bit of, 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 of uh, the, the last crucifixion of Jesus Christ, that, that one that Mel Gibson made that is so real to life. I watched a little bit of it, and they had in there that they saw that he was dead. And, they, and one of the soldiers said, well, make sure. That's Mel Gibson's version. Make sure. And they took the spear. Remember, he had a spear pierced side. And they rammed it up into him, into his heart. And it bled forth what? Water and blood. Water and blood. And so that tells me that they made sure he was dead. Jesus died died on the cross. He didn't die by them breaking his legs. He didn't die by the nails. He didn't die by the beating. He didn't die by the spear. He was already dead. He died by giving his life up so that we could be saved through faith in him. Amen. How many knows that this morning? Jesus saves. Amen. To the utmost. Saves to the utmost. So he had power to determine when he died, so they pierced his side. So he opened up his side. He opened up that which was covered. He unveiled himself. And he said, I want you to see that I was really dead. I want you to know that my body died on that cross. And I just stepped out of that body. I went into the lower parts of the earth. I preached to hell. And I brought captivity captive with me. Hallelujah! and it carried him into glory. We don't go down there. We're, there is no place for us as believers in hell anymore. Remember, he taught it paradise. He called it Abraham's bosom. But that place is now with Jesus in glory because when he went, he took captivity captive. He led them through the gates of heaven and he brought them in and he said, lift up thy gates. Lift up the head of your gates and and." and and, and the king of glory will come in. And that was a psalm wrote about his triumphant entry into glory with all these saints that he had released from the belly of, of the earth. And so Abraham and all those in Abraham's bosom, he led them into heaven. And so we don't go down and then up. We just go up. Amen, everybody. We just go up. This body goes down, this spirit goes up. If you know Jesus, you ought to be shouting a little bit right now. Cause there ain't no grave gonna hold my body down. Well, there ain't no grave gonna hold my body down when I hear that trumpet sound I'm gonna get up this is the way we used to do it I'm gonna get up I'm gonna get up out of that ground sister June there ain't no grave gonna hold my body down oh hallelujah Doreen we got to go one day. It's either going to be by grave or by rapture. But no grave is going to prevent us. How many got loved ones? We had to say got goodbye to their body, but we just said, I'll see you later to their spirit. Woo! Because they're with Jesus. And when he comes back, the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we that are alive and remain shall be caught up together to be with them in the clouds. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Anybody got somebody over in glory right now that they can't wait to see? Woo! Glory to God. Swagger used to sing, heaven's getting sweeter all the time. Seems like lately it's always on my mind. Soon I'm going to leave this world behind. For heaven's sounding sweeter, Sister Shirley, all the time. Russell couldn't sing a lick over here, but oh, I can't wait to hear him sing over there. Woo! Glory to God. And there are those that are coming in late. 
The Bible talks about the 11th hour. The 11th hour. Why did Jesus even put that parable in there? The 11th hour. In Matthew 20, he says, The kingdom of heaven is like the owner of an estate who went out in the morning at dawn to hire workmen for his vineyard. Jesus is saying, this is my kingdom I'm talking about. And I, and, and, and I go out and I'm looking for people to help me. I'm looking for people to work. See, God's got us to work in his kingdom. He works with us. The Bible said the Lord working with them. The Lord works with us. How many knows we can't do it ourselves? We are laborers together with God, Paul writes. He is in this with us. We are his garden, but we're also his co-laborers, and, and he empowers us. So here's Jesus talking about the kingdom, and he is saying, I'm going out to get people to work in my vineyard. He calls it a vineyard. You know, a vineyard is not like, you know, we have around here. We, we have these little ones in our in the backyard. We really, we, we just had bullish vines, to tell you the truth. We didn't have no, no, no uh, grape vines. We just went out in, in the season. Anybody know what I'm talking about? A bullish? You know what a bullish is? Muscadine? Ours wasn't, we wasn't that fancy. We just had them little black bullishes. That's what we called them in George County. But a vineyard, <laughs> a vineyard is much bigger than probably what we experience. I used to live uh, in, uh, for a little while, I ministered in Pearl River County, and they would have the blueberry festival, and I'd see little blueberry patches, and they would have a blueberry queen, and they had a blueberry parade, and, and we'd have a, our little church would have a booth, and we'd try to raise money for the youth and for the building, things of that nature, so we frequented that. And they would raise these blueberries. And, you know, I never saw a real, for real, big-time blueberry orchard or field until I got over there. And, the man, these people are serious about blueberries, let me tell you. Well, this was a vineyard even bigger than that. Have you ever seen the, the wine countries of California? And I mean, it's just filled with vineyards. They're beautiful. I'd like to go. I'm not going to go drink wine now. Don't look at me like that. It'll be non-alcoholic wine. But I would like to see, because Jesus calls his kingdom a vineyard like that. It's even bigger, more bigger than that. But you can kind of, Brother Lewis, see what he's talking about when you see what they understood a vineyard was. It's huge areas where they're growing grapes. And he sees all these huge fields. And I'm thinking, how do they do it? How do they get to all of those plants in Jesus's day he's got all these vineyards how does and so Jesus is saying the harvest is plenteous but 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 the labors are few so here's Jesus in his kingdom going out and he's looking for people and the Bible says he goes at dawn that's the first hour there's 12 hours in the Jewish work day oh praise the Lord for an American work day amen Amen. Now, some of us, we even scaled it back from there, you know, and, uh, and we try to ride the clock every chance we get, you know, stretch it on out. But then it was 12 hours. I mean, when the sun, just before the sun came up, they were there. And when the sun, just before it went down, they were there. And then they could go home. And so this is the kingdom. That means the Lord is busy about his work. Amen. And he's looking for people that he can bring in to help him. And so he's out and at dawn, he, he has people, and then he goes out the third hour. It's about 9 o'clock a.m. our time. He goes out, and he says, hey, come work for a day's wage. Now, that's a pretty good deal. You know, you didn't start at 6. You start at, 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 you start at 9, the third hour, at about 9 o'clock, and you're still going to get a whole day's wage. Now, a whole day's wage was a penny in, in our currency, so it's not that much, but hey, he's going to give me a whole day's wage, and, and I wasn't even there when they first started. That's a deal. So he goes, and they said, I'll do it. So he goes, and he recruits them for his kingdom, and they're so happy to be a part of the kingdom of the Lord, and they're out there working, and they didn't come at dawn. They weren't here at the first. They came in a little later, and then he goes, and he says, there's still not enough. And he goes at the ninth hour, and he shows up at about uh, our time. It's about 
about 3 p.m. And he says, hey, I, I haven't got enough people in my, in, my, in my vineyard to collect my harvest. I, I want you guys to come. And they feel his presence and they feel his call on their life. And they're all excited. He says, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a whole day's wage. I'll give you all of it if you'll start right now. Hey, that's a better deal, isn't it? Don't you think? I think that they got, hey, I, I don't know about those other guys, but, but I'll take it. He gets gives them a full wage for the 12 hours, and it is now 3 p.m., all right? And then he goes out, and he hires people, and he keeps hiring them, and he gives them the same thing, and he comes to the 11th hour. How many know that's where we are right now? We are at the 11th hour, and Jesus is still going out, and he's reaching people. He's, he's reaching the Thomases out there that hadn't quite come in yet. They seem like they're missing it, but they're not going to miss it. Hey, they seem like they're the least, but they're not the least. Jesus said, the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. So he says there's no difference. He said, I'm going to bless them, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pour my spirit out upon them just like I did those that were here at daylight. They're going to get it all too. And so he goes out there the 11th hour and he sees them and they're not doing anything. And they're not even thinking about doing anything. And he gets on them. Hey man, how many know Jesus will get on you? I'm praying for Jesus to get on some more folk. And because you know why? Because Jesus needs help in his vineyard. He gets on them and he and he begins to recruit them and they say he says, Hey, if you'll come work, I'll give you a full day's wage. I'll give you everything I'm giving everybody else. You get to it's the eleventh hour, sun's about gone down, the day's about done, but there's so much to do. I need all the help I can get. And so they take him up on it. Oh, I love Jesus for that. And we're in the eleventh hour. Now I've been around a long time. I was raised in church, but I want you to know. This old sunrise uh, guy that I'm so glad we're not doing sunrise service again, amen. <laughs> I was raised in the sunrise era, and as I was driving the van, some of the kids said, look at there, they're at church early this morning. I said, yeah, they must be having sunrise. I'm so glad God delivered me from sunrise service <laughs> because I was, a, I was a preacher's kid. And I didn't like sunrise service. I said, Lord, if you'll let me, we're going to wait till everybody can wake up and worship you before we have church. So I'm trying to keep that promise, all right? And so here we are, people that at an early age, I can remember the Lord coming upon me in a powerful way when I was four years old. Oh, not everybody had that privilege, but Randy Rigney had that privilege. But you know what? That don't make Randy Rigney better than anybody else. It don't make... Simon, Peter, and John better than Thomas, one iota. They came in last, or rather he came in last. They came in first, but when he got there, they got Jesus anyway. They got it all. And there are people coming in and the power of God's falling on them. And some of us that's been around a long time, we think, well, you know, we've done it a whole lot longer than everybody else. Surely, surely God ought to favor us. No, that's kind of the way we do things. But that's not the way my Jesus does anything. You come on in, Thomas, because God's got a call on your life. You know what Thomas spent his life doing? After Jesus ascended, he received the power of the Holy Ghost. He became a witness. He went into to the nation of India and he preached there. Many got saved. Miracles happened. Let me tell you Jesus had a call for Thomas. It took him a little while longer. We're in the 11th hour. It's taking some people a little, a little bit longer than it did some of us. But praise God Thomas is coming in. Somebody shout Thomas is coming. Thomas is coming. Thomas is coming. And so Jesus is out there and he's recruiting. He is recruiting. He is moving people in. It's the 11th hour. He sees that his harvest is still so great, but there's still not enough people. So what is he doing? He's showing up. He's touching people's lives. And listen, the Bible tells us that so many are like this, that when those that had been there and they've worked all day in the heat. They've sweated. They've been there when nobody else was there. And they saw these people coming in, getting as good a blessing 
as they had been getting and they had served and worked. How many, how many know you don't get up there in the glory land because you're a good worker? It's the grace and mercy of God, my friend. You know, some of us people, we forget that. God gave us the privilege to work longer than some people, but heaven is by the grace of the living God today. And it's the only way it's going to come. It's the only way we're going to get there is by the grace of God. So here they are, and they're coming in, and those that have been there, and they've worked through all kinds of things. They see these new guys just right at the last minute coming in, and you know how we are. Hey, wait a minute. And this is what he says. You, we've been here all day, and you gave us this, and they just been here one hour, and you gave them the same thing you gave us. And the Lord says, they said, by doing this, this one version says, you have made them equal with us. You have made them equal with us. Let me tell you, there's a Latter-day harvest that's coming that God's pouring out his spirit on. And yes, they are equal with us. I'm looking for it. I'm longing for it. I'm not jealous of it. I'm telling you, there's going to be some folks that have lived for the devil all their life, and the Lord's going to get on them, and they're going to come in, and we're going to have to take turns preaching because the Holy Spirit's going to be on them, and God's got to call on them. They're going to win people to the Lord with their call in just this last hour. We are in the 11th hour. And Jesus is about to split the eastern skies. Let's all stand together. Jacob, would you come? I just wonder today if we got any Thomases in the house. We got you. You haven't really made a move yet, but you sure have been feeling the Lord dealing with your heart. Let's pray. Lord, if there is any 11th hour people in this building, Lord God, that we are so close of your coming, the last hour of the latter days is upon us and yet you still have people God they're young they're old rich poor they're from every class of people on the face of the earth every tongue every kindred every nation Lord God called them because Lord you need them in your hearts and you told these guys that said hey you've made these people equal with us of course yes they were to you, they meant just as much to those that were already in the fold, already in the field, already serving you. And you said, is it not mine to do with? Is it not lawful for me to do with what belongs to me, what is mine? Lord, that's why we just say, Lord, you have your way. You just have your way. Not my way. You're not going to do it my way. I don't know what I'm doing most of the time. But you know what you're doing. And God, you are in control of what's going to take place in this last day move of God. This 11th hour. People are going to come in. We're going to see their lives completely, radically changed. And Lord God, there may be some people that judge. There may be some people that are jealous. There may be some people that's been around, think they got an anchor on God, that call it this can't be of God because they don't look like we do. They're not doing what we think they order. But Lord, you are in control of what you are doing in your vineyard, in your kingdom. And we just want to get out of your way. We just want to get out of your way. Help us, Lord, to understand. You told us this in your, in your Word. You gave us the eternal Scripture to know it and read it and understand by the help of the Holy Spirit and the grace of God where we are in time right now. Lord God, time is ticking, and there's still a great harvest of souls. And we believe, Lord God, that they're coming in. They've known about it. They've even had an appreciation for it. They really have not moved. And now you're coming. And you're saying, why stand ye idle? You're just standing by. I don't want you to stand by. I want you to come with me. And I've got something for you to do in my kingdom. Lord God, right now, while every head's bowed and every eye's closed,
you have something for all of us in your kingdom. And the reward is great to serve you. And by grace, we have eternal life. Not by works, lest any man boast. But by grace through faith are we saved. And that same grace has pre prepared and provided a place for us to serve you in the kingdom. And the gifts and calling of God is without repentance. And Lord God, we thank God for the gift and for the calling of the Lord Jesus upon your people. Lord God, I pray if there's a Thomas in this building that's ready to come on in, just surrender. I just pray, God, they take this opportunity to say, hey, that's me, and I'm ready to lay it all down. I'm ready to give everything to him. He's calling me, and I'm answering the call that the Lord is placed upon my life. Say, Pastor, that's me. That's me. And I want this morning to just acknowledge it by stepping out of my seat and just coming down to this altar area and saying, I'm coming to surrender. I'm coming just as I am. I don't know how it's going to happen. I just know God is moving in my life. And I got to answer the tugging that is upon my heart. You're here this morning. And that's you. Whoever you are, I want you to get out from your seat. I want you to walk down this aisle and come here and stand. Sing it with him this morning. Forgiven this morning, celebrate your forgiveness. the blessings of the Lord that he has spoken out of his word over our life. Thank you, Jesus, for your word of blessing. We just lift your hand this way as we just read this blessing over each and every household, every soul in this building, over those that, their lives that are, have joined us over Facebook Live. Hear the word of the Lord today. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen.
Praise God. One more time, give Jesus a great big praise.